Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. And the SPY right now is looking kind of bullish guys. Today the SPY recaptured that 50 daily moving average which is around 400.4ish right now. Okay. Very, again, also getting very close to giving my yellow trend line here that third test. Okay, for, so for tomorrow, a test of 402.5-ish would be the test of that, a third test of that trend line. And if it can break above, that would be a breakout, of course. It's pretty bullish, all right? Now, SPY closed just below my 38.2 FIB level at 401.68, okay? The high today was right at 401.60, so 8 cents shy of that level it closed just below it to to simplify this with this breakout today okay with this breakout today that that's a bullish that's counter that's i consider that a breakout and that is the level that must hold the 50 daily moving average which is around 400.4 that's the support level that must hold for tomorrow okay we can round it down to 400 because a lot of people they like to I guess keep their levels even but yeah 400 to 400 point five zone is the critical support level for tomorrow to keep this breakout intact okay if that is if if, if bulls are able to do that we should be able to go test this uh yellow trend line we'll see if we'll get any sellers but above 42.5 would be a breakout of this yellow trend line that i have there okay now remember guys last friday we recaptured this pink trend line right here, okay? We recaptured this pink trend line. That was my neckline for my head and shoulder pattern. Last Friday, we recaptured it. Uh, Tuesday, we back, you can see here, we back tested it as a support. We tested it as a support. We had some washes below, but at the end of the day, we had like a recapture of this trend line. So on the daily chart, it was not considered a breakdown, but it defended. All right. Now, next day, following day, which was today, we gapped up for for whatever reason, we gapped up. Okay. So I'll, I'll go here on the 15 minute chart. It was kind of difficult day to trade. Um, I mean, when it worked out, it worked out, but it was difficult because you guys can see here all morning, the spy was chopping. Okay. This pink line right here, I'll change it to yellow. Was my 400 resistant level? That's the level I was watching. You guys see here all day it just just testing it and basing just below it. It didn't break down the 398 support that I have. All right, and then here's the frustrating part for me. Waited all day for a breakout. We got the breakout. And what happened? What happened at the 130 candle? Had a false breakout. Okay, so imagine waiting all day for a breakout. I finally got you know I finally take a position for 1.6s, 0.5s was my target for a level to level move and then it didn't work out okay so i had to cut loss on this candle when it broke below all right the reason why i cut loss there is because it invalidated my setup i was buying calls based on the breakout of 400 so when it broke back below 400 it invalidated my trade setup therefore i just cut my loss okay at this point i was you know pretty frustrated so you know, I didn't take the false breakout setup, and in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. I just gave myself time to cool down. I waited for the next setup, and boom, very nice end of day uh, uh, setup level to level move here. When we broke out 400 again, okay. At first, you don't succeed. Dust yourself off and try again. All right. And end of day, boom, nice level to level move. So one. For two, 50% trading accuracy for Uncle Charter. Just playing the levels and staying unbiased, all right? So as far as the bull case goes, as long as it stays above the 50 daily moving average, the bulls have a shot at more upside, okay? And for all the people that love RSI, I use the RSI 5 and it's not overbought just yet, okay? So if you're using RSI 7 or RSI 14 or whatever, then it's definitely not overbought, okay? So there's a chance of more upside as long as SPY can hold above the 50 daily moving average, okay? I'll be watching for a clearing of 41.6, today's high as well as a FIB level, and the breakout of this yellow trend line here, which would be at 42.5. If that can happen, 
We could possibly see 404 to 405 zone with 406.5. And the critical level I got would be at 408 because that's the 23.6 fib level that I have there. Okay? Now that's the bull case. Bear case scenario is that it breaks back below the 50 daily moving average. If it breaks back below 400, I would look to short, okay? With targets at 398 to 398.5 zone, 396.5, that's the FIB level. And of course, this, this pink trend line again around 395.7-ish. Yeah, 0.7-ish. Break that down, maybe we can go back and test the 200 daily moving average which is around 392.3-ish. Also, my FIB level, the 61.8 FIB level at 391.4. Now, we, I play this level to level. I'm not chasing home runs, especially in today's market. I'm not chasing home runs. I'm chasing level to level moves with proper risk management, okay? So, you guys got the bull case and the bear case. This 50 daily moving average will be the level to watch. 400, 400.5 zone. Above, stay bullish. Below, get bearish. Okay, simplify it, guys. Triple Q, we finally got that close above 311. All right, that's a good sign for the bulls. All right, so tomorrow, if we break back below 311, because you guys see here, we had a lot of tests of 311, many intraday breakouts above, but we never got the close above it for a while until today. Okay, so 311 will be the level to watch for triple Q. As long as above, bullish with 312.5, 314, 315.2, and 317.3-ish in play, okay? Now, if 311 fails, that's a false breakout setup, all right? It's not an intraday false breakout. It's a daily chart false breakout, which in my opinion would be a lot more powerful. So, if 311 fails, look to short with 309, 307, 305, 303.8, and 302 in play. Okay, guys? IWM, you guys see here on Monday, on Tuesday, and even last Thursday, the 174.3-ish level was tested as resistant. Today, we finally closed above it, and that level was tested as support. So as long as above 174.3, IWM have a chance to rally a little bit more, possibly go test this blue trend line I got here at 176.8-ish, all right? Above that, above 176.8 would be bullish, look to long with 179.5, uh, 181, 181.8-ish, and then 185.5-ish in play, okay? So 174.3 is the level to watch. Now, if that breaks down, today was a false breakout, we could see more downside, Back down to one, uh, well, there's a gap at 171.8. Maybe we could drop down to 167.5, all right? Apple, beautiful, uh, uh, you know, beautiful setup here for Apple, okay? You see this yellow trend line? We had a couple, like a double top here, one test, two tests right here. Yellow trend line around 156.3-ish, okay? We broke out that level. On March 20th, Tuesday, we tested that level as a support, and it was successful. You guys see that wick, all that buying pressure. So we saw a roll reversal on Apple, followed by a gap up today. Now, Apple closed above the 160.5 level. That's a fit, That's one of my FIB level. That's a 50%, excuse me, that's a 61.8 FIB level, all right, from all-time high down to January 2023 low. Okay, and that's the 61.8 FIB level at 160.5. We cleared that today. It wasn't a strong breakout, but it managed to close above it on the daily chart despite many failed attempts in the previous week. So 160.5, if that does not hold tomorrow, switch to bearish. False breakout setup. All right, targeting lower downside down to uh, 158.5. There's a gap down to 158 actually. So down to 150 will be support. And then that critical one, uh, 156.3 level. Below 156.3 would definitely be bearish for Apple. Okay, But right now, Apple is in breakout mode. As long as above 160.5, I recommend you guys stay bullish with 162 and 165.4-ish in play. All right? 
Here's Tesla. Got a couple of trend lines I'm looking at here. They're pretty close together, but um, this pink trend line, that's the bigger bull flag that I had here. Tesla's been basing just below it, been battling there to break out. Today, it's a pretty weak breakout, but it managed to close above that bull flag today, okay? I also have another trend line, the blue trend line that I'm watching, okay? So for tomorrow, 192 uh, must hold that support to keep a breakout of this pink one, the pink, the big bull flag in, uh, intact, all right? And if it could take out this blue trend line, the breakout for tomorrow would be uh, 194, all right? So breakout 194, and we'd be, it would be bullish. I would look to long on the breakout of 194, targeting 196, 199, uh, 201, and gap fill at 203 at least. Could go higher, but those are the levels I'll be watching first. All right, now if you want to get bearish, I want to see a breakdown. First of all, it needs to drop back below 192 to cancel this breakout of the bull flag and break down 190.3. I would look to short if these supports fail, targeting uh, 185.5 ish gap fill around 183, 180, maybe go test 178 and 175.6. All right, remember, guys, it's not about predictions. We're just looking to react. What level is going to break? What level is going to fail? And, you know, and just follow the plan. Now, here is the DXY battle, battling around this Fibonacci channel line. Okay, supports at 102.5 that I'll be watching. And there's a gap fill at 102.8-ish. So, to be bullish, it needs to break above or, or build some bullish momentum. Break above 10283 to put 103.4 uh, and 104.1 back in play, okay? Now, if you're bearish, you want to see DXY break down 102.4 to put 101, uh, 101.9, 101.5, and this um, right here, 100.8, okay? This is a previous pivot low here back on February 2nd. All right, guys, that's the DXY. But look at the VIX. VIX look like it's dumping still. All right. It needs to break up. I got resistant here at 20 and 21.2 ish. All right. Break above those resistant levels. That's what VIX need to do to look bullish. As of right now, the next support is at 18. Looks like VIX wants to test that level. All right. 18 was tested a couple of times in the past. You guys can see here one test, two tests. Can we get that third test? Maybe get a bounce there. We'll see. But if it breaks down, that'll be pretty more. That'll be even more bearish. Putting 17 and 15.5 or six, excuse me, in play. All right. Now let's end this with the option flow. This filter for 500k premiums or above. 66, 67% uh, in the puts here. 20 over 27,000 contracts to 13,000 call contracts that are being moved around. Nothing that really sticks out to me though. Triple Q. 62% uh, this is a big size one but it's a split order big size one but it's a block order not seeing any aggressive plays but overall 62% in the put uh, puts IWM 96% for put contracts flows into puts lots of block orders here these are all puts but they're very in the money puts Okay, maybe a like every time I see moves like this, I'm thinking a big move is coming. Usually there's a big move that comes, but to the upside, to the downside, we gotta let the price action show us. But here's some aggressive ones here. These are sweep orders. This one's over 10,000 in size. Okay, so 167 strike price for May. This is for May. It could be hedges. Could be hedges, guys. Seeing a bunch for April 21st, 170 strike price, 165. This one, April 21st. You know, they come in with, for certain dates. You see a lot of these for April 21st. Now the new date is May 19th. Very repetitive dates that make me think maybe that's hedges. But I don't know for sure, okay? Uh, Tesla, 76% in the puts. Okay. This is, uh, this one came in this morning, though. 3.8 million in premium, over 10,000 in size, 192.5 strike price for March 31st. Okay, nothing, anything else? 
Nothing really. This is a split order. Very strange. 155 million. 450 strike price for January 19 of next year. That's probably a hedge, maybe. And uh, here is the VIX. 44% in the calls. 56% in the puts. There you go. There you guys have it. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more content from Uncle Charters, please consider joining my Discord. Other than that, have a great day. Peace.